Hey guys, um, welcome to my editing tutorial. So uh, today I'm going to show you, well, just some of the basic things I do when I'm editing. This is a mouse friendly tutorial, so hope you enjoy it and let's begin. So first off, what you want to do is make a new file. And I usually do uh, 1280 by 720 pixels. It's just um, gives me a good quality, and it doesn't make my image too bad. So I also do 300 resolution. Just if anyone wants to know. Now I'm just gonna click File, and I'm going to place the b background. So basically, I just have a little folder where I have backgrounds and objects and stuff and I'm just gonna choose a little uh, picture I want to use as the backdrop for my sim since I typically do the background before putting in the sim just because I like to see how the sim fits in with the background if that makes sense so now I'm going to place another file and I'm going to go into my screenshots folder and uh, just go ahead and get my sim. So I have a lot of uh, pictures of other sims but um, I chose a couple and I'm going to be doing this one right here. So. Now I'm just using the transform tool which is control T if anyone's curious. And I'm just resizing her just so she fits in nicely with the within the frame of the file and everything. So yeah. Now I'm just um, moving her around a little bit. Just seeing how it looks. Now, here, the next step is, it's a little bit time consuming, it's taking away the background, but I do it with the pen tool. I basically just put dots all around the sim until, so I can make a selection. And that way, instead of using the magic eraser tool, I can just um, do that. Because Magic Eraser tool normally it makes the borders very pixelated, kind of deletes some of the parts of your Sims screenshot. I don't know. It's just it's worth it in the end. So yeah, I'm just speeding this process up. And yeah. Basically, I just go all around her, the sim. I just kind of make a silhouette around her. And then I just can, I go around the background just to make sure to delete all around it. And I connect the dots. Then I click selection or make selection and just click OK since it doesn't really matter what that box says. Now, what you want to do is click your delete button on your keyboard, but it says that you can't delete it because object is not directly editable. So basically, you have to rasterize the layer or object before you delete it. So normally, I just go in with um, my eraser tool and click on the picture and this box comes up. And it just basically says that object must be rasterized before you can directly edit it. And yeah, so I just click OK and it automatically rasterizes it. Now normally people just right click the layer and select rasterize layer. But I already um, rasterized it so I don't need to do that. 
but that is also something I usually do. So now we are actually just going to click delete and as you can see it just got rid of all of the white around her and it leaves us with the actual picture we had for the background. So as you can see it leaves just very smooth edges it doesn't leave like pixelated around her it just it looks pretty pretty smooth pretty good and that's that's something that's pretty important when you're doing edits for competitions or just sim edits in general so now i'm just going in and deleting this part and normally you want to leave little spaces between the lines and not long spaces because they turn out straight like this and you want them more to do like a curve when you're doing around the sim just so she doesn't look like a box you know so just go in take your time make it look good if there's any little borders left, just make sure to delete them. And yeah. Plus that's a little time consuming, the pen tool thing, but honestly it's very worth it. So next thing I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna change the background since I don't really like this one. I want it to be more like a daytime kind of scene, so yeah, I'm just gonna delete the layer and file displace a new background and I'm gonna go into my little sim edit stuff folder and put the sim over that and boom now we have our background so now what I'm gonna do is just kind of move you can move the sim around with the control T but I like how she looks so it's fine now make sure you're on your uh, layer background layer and rasterize that and now you're gonna go in and adjust the brightness and contrast with uh, image adjustments and then you brightness and contrast so I just you can mess around with it just see how you like it maybe you want a more contrasted background it makes bit more pop and now I'm going in and playing around with the hue and saturation tool which it kind of lets me change the lighting of the background a little bit as you can see it can make it can really change the mood of the picture so I went with this kind of pinky light tone just went with the lightness a little more and reduced the saturation so next thing I do is just check, see how it looks, then I'm going to go into my background layer, just make sure I'm on that, I mean just name it, background, just so I can quickly like identify it if I'm not looking at the thumbnails or whatever. Then you go into filter and then blur. You go into Gaussian blur. And this is a tip I seriously recommend because it really, really helps your sim pop out. It really gives them that, that main focus on the picture. So I just kind of play around with it depends on what mood I want for the picture I just blur it out as you can see she pops out a lot more now now another huge tip I have is so that she can really blend in with the background just so she doesn't look that harsh over it I just go in with my blur tool and you're just gonna want to go in with not a too big of a size but just go over one swipe over the edges just so she looks a little softer just don't go over too much because we don't want her to or him whatever you're editing honestly to fade away you just want them to blend in a little bit more 
So yeah, I'm just one side, just softly going over it. And in the end, she looks like she's actually in the place, you know? But there's still a couple more tip, tips and tricks you can still do to really make her look like she's like right there, you know? So, I also like to just kind of blur out the skin a little bit just to make them look very like flawless radiant skin. Just looks really pretty on Sims. So yeah. Also, um, well now, actions. Now you just go into window and then action. Actions, think of them as kind of Instagram filters, like they help your picture look a little different. Now I normally use light pink tint from these, uh, this pack of actions I downloaded a while ago and I'll make sure to leave the link down below, but yeah. Normally I use light pink tint, now I'm just going to click on this little play button uh, symbol. And then you just click continue, click continue until windows stop popping up. It's just asking for like permission to modify that. So next thing you want to do is just hit alt Control z just so your layers aren't all merged together because that's what actions kind of do sometimes. So yeah, that just kind of makes them not to be only one layer. So I, I just play around, kind of see what I like best, what I can take off to make it look more like what I want it to look. And yeah, so now I'm just looking at how testing the water is just seeing everything I want since I want my sim to be a little more in contrast, I don't want her to look too soft. I just delete the rest of the layers that I don't want. And yeah, you can see it's, she just looks a little more hmm, contrast-ish, I guess. <laughs> So yeah, this just this next tip I have, it's just really gonna it makes the picture look really good. It's one of the basic things I use and that is light leaks and it just makes the picture look mm, oh so good. It's it just really puts the sim in the scenario. It it's almost like like light is hitting the actual camera, I guess, as in if it was a real picture. And I just set that to hard light and I reduce the opacity just so it doesn't look as harsh and it just makes it look like, um, like she's, it really ties the layers together, you know, so it makes her look like she's in the scenario. So next thing I do, I just rasterize the layer again and go into Hue Saturation tool. And you can really play around with this, just make it look however you want. I didn't really like the slight leak, so I changed it afterward. I have a couple in a little folder. I actually end up going with this orangey-ish one at the top. Uh, this purple one I actually used in an edit for this competition, um, Mermaid Ash here on YouTube. Uh, she's hosting it on Twitter and Discord. If you guys would want to join, season two will be uh, open very soon. And yeah, but I'm just gonna go with this one. I'm going. I'm just gonna hit Control T so I can transform it and make it look how I want. Now, you just move it around, see how you want it to be placed, and then you... It looks kind of bad quality right now, but after you just set it to hard light and reduce the opacity, it looks really soft. Right now, you can really see those pixels on the dark part of the picture. But yeah, look, just changes up. Now, 
for the layer blending mode you can really play around there's a lot and a lot of them look very different from one another just depends on the mood you want for the picture so I typically just go with hard light and reduce the opacity it's just my it's what I like to do and it then I'm just gonna go into um, hue and saturation for this too just because I really want to give it a different mood from because it's very red so with this as you can see you can go very cool very warm it all it's just it's all just up to you so basically um, all you have to do is just swipe over the colors maybe lighten it a little bit depends on what you want I went I kind of went with this kind of pinkish red kind of light just not as intense of a red as it was before so now I'm just moving it over a little bit so that the little light flare lens flare I guess you could call it is over her just so it looks more like it's an Instagram kind of pick vibe you know so this little piece that was left on the left of the picture that's kind of just the original color it doesn't really matter because I'm gonna end up cropping the picture anyway so it for now it's just not relevant now I'm just gonna go in and erase this little piece as you can see there's a little piece of white right there on her hair and it's just not what I don't like it because it kind of takes away that whole she's right there vibe because it's part of the old background and you just go in with a very tiny eraser and not too much of an opacity just so it doesn't like erase her completely and yeah now she looks a little more so like the edges look a little more smooth so next thing I do is just um, just change up the contrast and brightness on the actual sim just to see I really want her to look very I want her to have more contrast so and her skin to look like deeper shadows and lighter um, lights I guess you could say and it just really makes the sim look, pop out it looks really good so the next tip I have is actually just um, something I don't really want to do this with the edit just because I like how it looks right now but uh, next thing you could do is just uh, it's adding a sh shadow under the eyelid and a little highlight just so her eyes look a little more deep and they just look a little more like dreamy I don't know I usually do do this with edits but this time I guess I'm, I just I, I wasn't feeling it for the whole picture vibe so for that I just uh, create a new layer and then I just go in with I set it to darken, like the to darken to the blending mode, and then just make it black. And then I just uh, just make sure your brush is on zero hardness, just so you don't have too harsh edges. And then you just go over the eye. This trick I actually learned it from um, Good Chills Studio here on YouTube. You guys should seriously check her out. Her edits are... They're just out of this world. They're amazing. So, yeah. So, next thing you want to do is just reduce the opacity so they're not too black because they looked kind of like demonic, you know? And then I just go in and blur it a little bit just so the shadow isn't too harsh. And, yeah. And then I just play around with the opacity a little bit just to see how deep I want it and yeah, all that. Then for the highlight, I usually use a light or add a layer over everything just so the highlight really looks at its widest. 
because under actions and everything it can kind of distort the color and yeah so I just go in with a really tiny brush and change it over to white to the whitest white then I zoom in and I just select a little point depending on the light source and just make it on both eyes but on this picture I didn't really like how it looked so I, I tried making it look good a couple times, like erasing and redoing the dot, but I just wasn't feeling it for this picture, so I do end up deleting them, but there's a lot of edits I have used them. So yeah, um, what I do keep though are the shadows. gonna do now is just export the file just you know name it tutorial and then like the next part is also something that really really helps bring that extra attention to the sim so I normally crop it as I said earlier I was gonna crop that part out I normally do vertical shots when I'm doing waist up sim shots just because it really makes the sim look like an actual like it's an actual like post you could see on Instagram if you will I guess but for this one I really wanted to see to for you to be able to see the background like kind of like she wants to see everyone to see where she is kind of so yeah I did a little more of a horizontal shot so also you can play around with twisting the image a little bit rotating it and that just really makes it look different and really just gives the gives it that extra little detail that gives you it just looks it looks really good so i just play around a little bit and then just save it So, this is what we're left off with, guys, and I feel like it turned out really good. I hope you guys liked it. I hope this tutorial was helpful for you. Helpful for you. And, yeah, so make sure, make sure to give this video a thumbs up if you haven't already, and make sure to hit that subscribe button because you help me out a bunch when you subscribe, and I hope you stick around for more videos, and, yeah, um, I hope you can maybe tweet me your uh, edits following this tutorial and yeah <laughs> bye guys